welcome friends to the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee and I'm here to help you become the guitar player that you always wanted to be. And if you want to be a great guitar player, there's one thing that you need. Just one thing. You need to have the guitar. Right? So we're going to be talking about how do we keep these guitars going? Uh, how do I get into that? How can I get into maintaining my guitar and not having to go to the guitar store to have somebody else do it? every single time I have a problem with the guitar. Uh, this has come up a ton in coaching. So, uh, and I'm looking for a few new coaching students. I got a few openings. So if you're interested, head over to uh, the link in the description here for the play guitar coaching. Um, but a lot of the students this time of year, for some reason, they're getting a lot of new guitars and it could be someone who plays acoustic guitar mainly and they're buying some new electric guitars and they don't know what to do about them. It could be someone who's had just one guitar that they've been playing for a long time and they bought another one or two more or three more. And you start to realize that, man, this could really get expensive if every time something goes wrong with these, I have to take them somewhere to get them fixed. So what I thought today would be a lot of fun to share with all of you is what's my recommendations for just dipping your toes in while getting started with maintaining your guitar. Uh, it's a great thing to do, uh, uh, and I find it a lot of fun. I, um, I, don't, you know, have, I don't go boating or golfing or any of those things. Uh, I get a lot of um, peace when I'm just sitting around working on my guitar. I think it's a lot of fun, and uh, maybe you would too. So today, let's, let's, you know, let's be bold. Let's say, okay, there's some things I could do to this guitar. I'm not going to mess it up. Uh, I'm going to learn here. Uh, we're going to talk about the essentials of beginning guitar maintenance. Before we get started, uh, this is not the lesson video. This is the audio podcast. We get into topics. We get deep with things. Um, if you're looking for the lesson video, if you're on mobile, a link should pop up right now. Uh, if you're on desktop or, or somewhere else, go to the description uh, and click the link down there. And there's there I have a link for one of the lesson videos. But let's start get started with this. What do you need? Let's round up some stuff that could help us maintain this guitar. The first thing, uh, you need some sort of cleaner for the guitar. I would recommend, because of different finishes um, do different things, I'd recommend making sure you get some sort of a dedicated guitar cleaner. And they sell, there's tons of different ones. You can get them on Amazon or, or go somewhere. I happen to use uh, Dr. Duck's Axe Wax. I don't know them. I have no relationship with them. This is just what I've been using for a long time. Um, it's kind of like an oil, but it's got a, it's, it says it's a, a string lube. It's a cleaner. It does no abrasives, no synthetics, no silicones, no uh, acids for all musical instruments. I like to use this because it, it covers a lot of bases with just one uh, product there. So some sort of a cleaner and maybe some fretboard. If you have a rosewood fretboard, something that's not finished like a maple fret uh, fretboard, uh, maybe some fretboard oil. Uh, and we can talk about that in a few minutes too. Uh, but, and also I didn't put it in my list, but I just remembered a microfiber cloth. Uh, this is a dirty one that I have right here. <laughs> uh, but uh, some sort of a microfiber cloth uh, for cleaning the guitar as well too. Uh, a toothbrush, toothbrushes and guitars. You, you wouldn't think so, but an old toothbrush, if you have one, uh, it's very helpful at keep, keeping your guitars uh, maintained. Uh, a set of Allen wrenches. So if you have the ones that came with your guitar in the case, you're a better person <laughs> than I. Mine are all long gone. But getting one of those kind of multi-tools that has a bunch of different Allen wrenches is, can, can save you when you, you've got some problems. Um, the next thing you want to get your hands on is an accurate tuner. Something that's not um, just one of those cheapies. Something that's, uh, I happen to use the Polytune 2 from TC Electronics, a little, one of these little mini pedals. Um, because it's very accurate, it has a strobe tuner. I don't know if you've seen what a strobe tuner is. Normally a tuner is the needle type tuner. So you're like low or high. A strobe tuner is kind of like, um, it's got a bunch of lights that go in a circle and they go in all different ways. And when you get in tune, they kind of all even out and they, they're very accurate. Um, you can also get a uh, an app. They have a lot of guitar tuner apps. There's a paid one, the Peterson uh, tuner app is is very good for that too. But something accurate, uh, we're going to be setting intonation with this. So it's something that's a, it's a, it's a very delicate process there. Uh, so then uh, the next thing you could get is a string winder. If you have a problem string uh, with putting your strings on and off, and then some sort of way to cut the strings, cut the ends off the strings there too. And uh, that's it. 
I think we could do that. I don't think that's too hard. If you could get, you know, get get you like a little um, storage bin, a little bucket, keep it by your guitars. They're having these things around. Uh, you're going to be uh, more apt to take care of your guitars and not let all that stuff hang out on them there. So we're going to start off with the body and the strings. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people will play a set of guitar strings until they they go dead. Uh, they uh, can't keep tune anymore or they turn black. <laughs> I've seen well, we all know that I've seen seen that happen a lot. Uh, but you know, there's 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 products like Fast Fret is one that I used to use to keep the guitars clean. We have acid in our sweat, and that has an effect on the the string. So um, I like to use this Dr. Duck's Axe Wax um, for my strings as well too, because they kind of it makes them a little slippery. It has a nice smell to it. I, I'm allergic to a ton of different things, and this is one of the few products I'm not allergic to. So. Um, I, I, I like to that, to do that, especially if I've been really sweaty, if I'm playing a gig or playing outside with a guitar, uh, I like to wipe the strings down after I use them. They tend to last longer and they keep their tune longer as well too. Um, but also the body of the guitar, that's pretty easy. Uh, you get those things sprayed onto the cloth, uh, you know, wipe everything off. If you've got a stubborn area, let it sit for a few seconds, go down there, but Here's one of the places where the toothbrush can help you as well, too. Um, sometimes I can take this cloth and get, get a lot of the dust and the things out from between the pickups. Between the bridge pickup and the bridge, that's no man's land there. So sometimes what I've done is take, take, um, take my cloth and use the, the end of the toothbrush to push the cloth through if I have space. In this one, I don't. The, the humbucker is so close to the bridge. So what I would do is actually take the toothbrush in there through the strings and knock a lot of that stuff away. Uh, so I could, uh, and you know, also pickups too. Pickups get awful grimy as well too. So uh, make sure that you keep up on your pickups as well too. Now let's talk about the fretboard. I've had a couple, I pulled a couple guitars out that hadn't played in a long time. Uh, did a, Filmed a, a few videos and then when the lights hit it just right, you say, whoa, I need to clean those things up there. So let's talk about cleaning your fingerboard too. Getting all that gunk off of there. Uh, what, what I this is a maple neck strap that I have, and that's very easy to see the gunk on there. Um, so a lot of times, what you can do is take your microfiber cloth here, maybe put some of this cleaning product on there, put it underneath all of the strings. I like to do that, and slide it up and down underneath the strings there. And when you find a fret that that uh, when you've got some some really tough stuff in there. Sometimes you might want to take some of this fretboard board cleaner. Um, now, if you have a rosewood fretboard, uh, those are untreated. That's just the wood there. It's been it's been polished, sanded, and polished, but it doesn't have a a sealer on it, right? So sometimes they get really dry. Have you ever noticed that that, that they kind of start to look um, uh, lighter in color? Uh, you know, like a really nice hydrated rosewood fretboard. It's got a nice, rich, dark brown color. Uh, so that's another one where I use the, the stuff I use soaks into that wood really well. So you might want to leave it on if you have an untreated fretboard. Leave on some of this fretboard oil or this axe wax that I use uh, and let it soak in. And if it soaks in really quick, uh, give it another one. Give it until, until you start to see, oh, okay, this wood's not going to be chipping. It's a very chippy wood. So, uh, And then once you get that down in there, you can start to see, oh, well, uh, I've left the oil for a while. And you can up against the frets, you can see where the fingerboard sweat kind of uh, collects together. Um, it's much easier to get off. And this is where your toothbrush comes in handy, too. You can take your, you know, loosen your strings and, and open it up a little bit or take the strings off completely and use your toothbrush right up alongside the fret to get all of that gunk off after it's been sitting in the fretboard oil for a while. So that's the real easy stuff, just keeping the guitar clean. But what about playability? What can we do today as a person who doesn't do much of this stuff? How can we do a little bit of a setup, something that we could use with our Allen wrenches that's going to lower the action and it's going to make comfort and ease a priority in your playing. And the first thing is the most obvious, and that is using your Allen wrenches to, uh, if you have an electric guitar, to raise or lower the strings. Right here on the bridge, 
on the top of each saddle, we have two places where you can use an Allen wrench to raise and lower each side of the saddle. Now, you, you, if the string's too low, you're gonna get buzz. And if the string's too high, it's gonna be tough to play. So if you're playing a guitar that's tough to play, you could lower these down a little bit. And once you lower them down, uh, what I like to do is lower them down until it starts to buzz. And then once you hear some buzz, now go back up a little bit, correct that, and you're at pretty much as low as the frets. If your frets are in good shape, you know, you're down pretty low at that point. Uh, it might be too low for you. You know, th th there's also the, the how, how comfortable it is for, for, uh, for you if you like to have a higher action. Uh, but this is where that you can, you can uh, set this yourself and you're not gonna mess anything up on the guitar by lowering or raising each saddle. Now, but what you do want to keep uh, in mind is that your fretboard has a radius. There's a curve to the top of the fretboard. Um, it's very slight. You may not have even noticed it before, but it's very curved. Take a look at your frets off to the side. You'll see there's a little bit of a curve there. Um, if that's not reflected in the way your, your saddles are set up, if you should see that there's that same curve from, curve from your fretboard um, is ref is reflected in the saddles. They have a little bit of a curve too. Um, if the saddles are all straight across, but the fretboard's curved, uh, you're gonna have very low action, kind of buzzing on the middle two strings and not on the, the high strings. They'll be harder to press down. You wanna make sure there, there are tools that you can get to match it perfectly, but you can eyeball this. If you see that all of your strings are pretty much curved, just like the fretboard, but one is higher or lower, uh, then you know, that, hey, that's when I can take it advantage of and bring them down. That will keep all the strings equally distant from all of the frets. And uh, it, it won't be distracting when you play having one fret that's too, one string that's too high or too low. Um, so when, you know, when you lower the saddles down, then the guitar is going to go out of tune. That string's going to go out of tune. You have to retune again. Uh, so sometimes you might have to go back and forth a few times till you get that string height correct. So the next thing that you can do is something that you cannot mess the guitar up. It's something that's easy to do is set the intonation on your strings. So what we're going to do, we'll take the high E string and we're going to play it at the 12th fret. Now, after that, we're going to lift our finger off and just play the harmonic that's at the 12th fret. And what you want to do is take your tuner and match those two up. Now this guitar, this one slightly, this one needs to be intonated as well too. So what I would do is I would take the saddle and move it either forward or backwards. The last time what we did with the saddle was we raised it or lowered it. Now we're gonna either remove the, the saddle forward or backwards. And what you can do is we see the difference between the harmonic and the fretted note at the 12th fret. Move it forward a little bit and see if they get better. And if not, that was going the other way. Move it back a little bit and see if it, they get closer that way. So do a little bit of experimenting. See, okay, move it forward. See if the two notes start start to move in the right direction. Or if that's not right, do it the other way. Usually there's a little screw in the back that you can, I have a fancier bridge here that has a different way of doing it, but um, that you can tighten it or loosen it with the screw until those two notes match. If you do that for all of your strings, your guitar, will it will sound in tune all the way across the fretboard uh, and you'll notice the difference right away. What's another thing that you can do? Well, there's something on the guitar neck called a truss rod. So a truss rod is a metal rod that goes through the, the center of your guitar neck all the way down. And you'll see, um, you'll see an adjuster. Some are down here by the pick guard. You'll see a little screw thing or some of them are up by the top of the neck and it's, it's either an Allen wrench or sometimes it's like a, Phillips head, uh, you know, where you would use a Phillips head on that. But basically what happens is that metal rod in there uh, will move, move either forward or backwards. It would either give you some forward bow with the neck or give you some back bow with the neck. Uh, and this is something that I've never seen anyone mess up their guitar from messing with the truss rod. Now, of course, if you get it all the way to it's as tight as it can go and then keep, you know, cranking on it, you may break the truss rod itself on the inside. But if you're gentle with it, if it gets to the point where it doesn't move anymore, stop and go back the other way. And you will, re you will instantly see a difference in the guitar 
and neck straightening. So now what do you want? So when you have a neck there, if you have too much curve, uh, a forward bow, if it goes forward too much, the strings become very hard to press down, uh, a little bit harder than necessary. If you have too much of a back bow, the strings will be laying on the frets and you'll have tons of buzz. The sweet spot is almost exactly straight with a little bit of forward bow, just a little bit, because you know our strings, when they, when they vibrate, they cover more distance in the middle of the strings than they do at the end of the string. So the middle of the strings is right there in the middle of the neck of the guitar, where if you gave it a little bit of curve, it kind of gives a little bit of extra room for those strings to, to ring out there. So um, what, you, what I like to do is, is uh, get the neck as straight as I possibly can and then back off just a little bit, make it go forward just a little bit more. And you'll see right away, like I said, with, with the, with the, um, the adjustment for the truss rod, uh, it doesn't take much, maybe a quarter of a turn one way or the other, and you'll see which direction it's going, if that's the one you want. If not, reverse it. Uh, but you can get your strings very close to the fretboard uh, without having a lot of issues just with that truss rod right there. And then if you did that, if you changed it a little bit, uh, you might want to go back and check your intonation. It could throw that off again there too. They want you to adjust these things. <laughs> these are meant to be adjusted. How they have them at the factory when they sell them to you may not be the right way that you like it. Everyone's different. There's no way they can tell if you like a, a lot of curve in the neck or like it completely straight as well, well too. Um, so once we've got all that done, the next thing is changing the strings, right? So changing the strings. Um, a lot of people are afraid, oh, I'm not gonna do it right. and. And there's a, there's two different ways. So if you have locking tuners, this guitar has locking tuners here. Uh, what you'll do is take the new string, uh, fish it through the, you know, take the old string off, take the new string, fish it through the bridge. And I'm talking about electric guitars here. Um, if it was an acoustic, you'll remove the pin, put the string down in there, put the pin down and then pull it tight so that the pin is keeping the, the string down there. But once you have your string, uh, up onto the 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 post and the, where the tuner is up there. Um, if you've got a locking tuners, you make that kind of straight so that when when you put the string through the hole in the tuner, it's kind of going in the same direction. Pull it just tight, then clamp down the locking tuner. Mine is you turn the little you turn it to the right on the back of the tuner and it locks it in place and then wrap it up right there. And that those work wonderful. They're very easy. They're super fast to change strings. But uh, I have a, a few different string changing videos. You can check those out. If you're an Academy member, there's one that's easy to get to. Uh, I've got some other ones that were on YouTube as well too. But if you have just a regular tuner, not a locking one, or just it just has a hole inside of the post there, you're going to pull your string through that post, give it some slack before you start turning it, right? So we wanna have um, a little bit of a wrap along the, the tuning post as well too. So once you get that open, and like I said, look at my other videos that show you how to do this. Um, once you have a little bit of slack there, and usually the slack I have is about an inch off of the fretboard when I pull the string tight. Um, then what we do is take the, the excess of the string, wrap it underneath itself, and then lock it down. Uh, and what that does is it locks the string in place. Then when you start winding the string, um, it's not going to slip on you. That's the thing that most people have a problem with is slipping strings when they don't lock them down uh, enough. Like I said, you can see those videos. Um, and the big thing about when you're first changing your string happens to everybody, you're going to break one. <laughs> you're going to tune it, turn it too far. So I would have the tuner close by so that you know when you're in the right neighborhood. Because um, usually what happens is people keep cranking it and cranking. It doesn't sound right. Crank, 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 ping. And <laughs> I know, uh, I know thousands of you are saying, yeah, I've done that too. Uh, so be careful with that. Strings, especially around your eyes too. Because I've had a couple close calls where a string broke and it gotten close to my eye there as well too. So uh, when you are tuning these new strings up, the first thing that you're going to notice is they don't keep their tune right away. Uh, they need to stretch out over time. So if you've got a new set of strings, maybe you went to guitar center and they put on a set of strings for you and you get home and they, they keep going out of tune. Uh, that's part of it. That, that, that's, that happens. Um, they take a little bit of time to set in. What I'd like to do is tug on the strings just a little bit. I put my hand at the fifth fret here, and then I put my, my left hand and my right hand underneath the string and pull on it a little bit and then tune it 
pull on it a little bit and tune it. And at some point when you pull on it, it stops dropping out of tune and you know, okay, you're, you're close to, to the settling point right there. So, but when you're tuning, one of the things that, uh, it was my band director in high school, uh, told me, he says, now tune up into the note. Don't go past it and tune down. I guess the strings have a tendency to slip if you go that way. I don't know. I don't know why, but I've always kept that practice of tuning up into the note. And that, that seems to, to work for me. Uh, it's that I don't really have any notes that slip. So start low and work high until it's in tune. So give it a shot. Go home tonight. Get your little kit together that I was talking about and take care of your guitars today. Get, get in the habit of maintaining your guitars. I'm starting to get back into playing mode. Uh, getting the band back together, just like the the band, we're getting the band. So I, I'm getting all of my pedal boards together, my amps together, my guitars are what I'm working on right now. Uh, if you go over to uh, Instagram, uh, even in Facebook, I'm doing as well too with my stories and some of my daily uh, reels. I'm going to be showing you this Jap, my very first Stratocaster. It was, it's, they sold it to me as a 57 reissue American Strat and all that was wrong. Uh, but I didn't know. <laughs> I just bought it. It was seafoam green at the time when I bought it. Uh, turns out it was a Japanese 67 reissue uh, guitar that I had been playing for years and years and years. It, it was a, that seafoam green from all the bars that I played turned really horrible. It looked awful. It was like dirty bathroom tile green. Um, so I had it painted black and it was a seven and a quarter radius. And, and, that's the that's the high I think the, the the steepest radius on a fretboard that you'll find there. It's a vintage style. And what I noticed is when I would bend strings, they would they wouldn't keep playing. They would fret out because of the curvature of the fretboard. So what I've done already is I have sanded that down to just like a Les Paul, a 12 inch radius, very flatter. Uh, much flatter radius for that. So I'm going to be sharing how I'm going through all of my guitar maintenance and all the things that I'm doing with that over there. So head on over uh, and, you know, subscribe to those uh, channels, Instagram and Facebook. I'll, there's There are links for that in the description as well, too. And before we go, I wanted to let you know, if you have chord problems, if your chords, your fingers aren't going the right place, they're touching the wrong strings, you have buzzing on your, your chords. They just don't sound great. They sound a little out of tune. I have a free guide for you. It's my guide to clear sounding chords. It's over at playguitaracademy.com forward slash chord guide. You can see it on the front page, but it's also in the description of this podcast that you're watching or listening to right now. Uh, it's free. Just go ahead and download it. And it takes you step by step through a bunch of the basic chords, all the adjustments to your shoulder, to your wrist, to your fingers, all the things that you need to do to adjust to get these chords sounding great. And uh, I can't wait for you to get that. And thanks for hanging out with me today. And I'm going to call it That's a Wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. And if you have benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable Apple Podcast or iTunes review if that's where you listen to it. It's the best way to make sure we get this content to more guitar players around the world. And if more help, structure, and results in your guitar playing sound good to you, Head on over to Play Guitar Academy. This is the world's most exciting, carefully planned guitar system, and together we will build your online home base for guitar. Thanks again. See you in the next episode.